it's now time for for us to proceed with the concept of the roundtable discussion and delve a little deeper into some of the topics, issues that we just heard about from our terrific speakers. And I'm going to start off with kind of uh, the overarching question with Dr. Waterhouse. I guess, could you kind of give us your kind of answer to the big question of, do clinical trials really give us an honest picture as to the adverse effects of these drugs when they're approved? Well, I think that's a really important issue, and all of the speakers have touched upon that. I think clinical trials should be considered a guide, but they're so certainly not the be-all and end-all. So we've all mentioned that the number of patients involved is small, so that they don't accu accurately um, represent uh, the risk that may emerge over time. Uh, we've talked about how um, the populations involved in studies may not accurately reflect the types of patients that we see in clinic. And the studies are of short duration, so they're really not even designed to detect long-term uh, treatment emergent effects and safety concerns. So they can be considered an initial guide, but I think it's very important to have post-launch uh, surveillance programs and physicians and patients really need to be good about reporting their side effects. Very good. I, uh, to Dr. Noe, ask the question which you, you touched on a bit in your, in your, uh, in your presentation, but how, how do you talk to women, their partners, to, with regards to family planning, uh, pregnancy issues, as it pertains to some of these new drugs where the data may not be so clear? Yeah, I think um, probably the most important part of the pregnancy discussion is that you, you can't wait until a woman comes into your office and say, says, I want to start a family or I'm already pregnant, that that conversation has to begin at the very beginning when you're first prescribing the medication, regardless of, you know, relationship status, regardless of really age, uh, all of those factors. Uh, I think it is a hard discussion, but I, I think you need to d just tell patients what you know and what you don't know. So I remind them that the data that we have is limited to the older agents. Uh, I let them know that for the newer drugs, we just don't have enough experience with them yet. If they are pregnant, I really encourage them to enroll in one of the pregnancy registries so that we can learn, and I, I let them know that'll, that'll be a benefit to other folks and their situation down the road. I would really steer away from the idea of offering false reassurance that with small numbers of observations or no observations, you know, that, that we would not want to conclude that those drugs are absolutely safe compared to those drugs like valproate where we have seen risk. And so I let them know that, uh, you know, it's a matter of, of delving into the unknown, that I would assume that they're uh, equally at risk from exposure to a newer drug compared to an older drug, that there may be lower risk, but there may also be higher risk. And I think most women are able to understand uh, that there's a limit to our current state of knowledge. Fair enough. To Dr. Williams on, on kind of a similar, in the sense that of a difficult question, how do you cancel the parent the, uh, of the college student, the, the, the child, who's very concerned about um, how the learning will be impacted, how schoolwork will be uh, in, uh, dealt with, with regards to the side effects of, uh, of these agents, particularly some of our newer drug choices? You know, I think that's a common question concern I get in the office. A lot of families don't even want to start anticonvulsants because they said, my child's going to become a zombie. So I think first there's just the reassurance uh, that most people tolerate their medications just fine. But I think once again, just as you alluded to, these have potential side effects. For me in my practice, I typically like to start my medication slowly, and I always give the parents the caution, pay attention. Now is the time as we start the medication, are we seeing any changes in cognition, behavior, learning? And that's the time to be most vigilant as for these side effects. Now that's a little complicated by the fact that many patients with epilepsy also have underlying learning issues as well. So I think you also have to counsel them about that. But I think once again, at least in practice for me, I try to go with a very slow approach with initiating medications. So if there are potential changes in behavior, responses, tolerability to the medication, that we can try to identify them. Fair enough. To Dr. Waterhouse, the, the big, uh, big question which is, We've heard about a lot of new choices of agents and drugs. Do these drugs confer advantages over previously released agents that were available and still available uh, with regards to side effect profile? 
Well, I think the big the big advantage in the big picture is that we just have a larger choice. So in the old days, we really just had, you could count them basically on one hand, the number of uh, options available for patients. Now we have uh, numerous uh, choices. And so that although even the newer drugs have side effects, we can select ones that we think our patients will tolerate. Uh, I think the newer drugs do seem to have um, some advantages in that some of them are less sedating than older drugs. Some of them have less organ toxicity than older drugs. And there are still other questions that are unanswered, uh, such as their long-term effects on bone and so forth. Uh, so I think that um, the, the best news is that we have a greater choice uh, that we can offer our patients and we can make selections within that choice. Okay. To Dr. Noe, how do you mitigate uh, the risks of uh, serious, some of these serious and chronic adverse effects when choosing an anti-epileptic drug. I guess any strategies that you tend to employ uh, in that regard uh, just to help our, our listeners, our viewers out there um, in terms of what to do when, when confronted with these choices of side effects and yeah, um I wish I had a unique strategy. Maybe if somebody <laughs> out there knows one, they'll post it on the blog. I think, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is when you deal with prescription medications, over-the-counter medications, side effects are a fact of life, and there's no way around it. Um, you're you're going to develop side effects of some sort in a lot of patients. I think if there's a strategy that's helpful in allowing patients to understand the risk and to manage the risk, it's that you can't just present at the time you prescribe a new drug a laundry list of these are all the things that could go wrong. I think it's our job as a physician to educate patients, to help them have appropriate perspective on the likelihood of how they'll do on the medication, how they'll feel, and the importance of balancing kind of that scary list of things that could go wrong with what it means for them to have good seizure control. Um, I think the other th point that I would say is you got to remember that the side effect issue is an ongoing conversation. It's not just here's what might happen today because things change as the body adjusts, as their physical state changes, their ability to tolerate a problem based on working, driving, going to school, family planning will change over time. Um, and, and also to remind patients uh, that if they don't feel good on a medication, we're not tied to it. We'll move on to the next thing. Um, for those things where you don't get a second chance, like pregnancy, um, like the bone health, try to be proactive in your conversation about that um, and, and just do our best. Um. Which is all that we can ask of anyone, to be honest. To Dr. Williams, on, on the, you brought up some big issues, as did everyone, with regards to some of the black box warnings, some alerts, mm -hmm. uh, and some of those involve very serious things, uh, mm -hmm. suicide, depression, uh, irreversible effects. Given that everyone is pretty knowledgeable when they walk in about those alerts, mm -hmm. uh, how do you deal with that on, a, on an individual basis when counseling your patients uh, about these very serious warnings and risks that come up? Well, I think, you know, as Dr. Waterhouse and Noe kind of alluded to, I think you have to kind of put this in perspective. So these serious adverse events that we were talking about really are uncommon to, frankly, rare occurrences. And I think if we're trying to balance seizure control versus the risk of these potential side effects that some may even be fatal or, you know, very crippling, um, I think you have to kind of ask them, you know, what level of risk are you willing to tolerate? Um, and I think, once again, that's our job as physicians, again, help put that into perspective for the patients. So, and you know, what I often tell my patients is I think, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be able to sleep at night. And if you're going to be up unable to sleep because of a potential rare risk, uh, then maybe, especially in this day and age where we do have more choices, maybe we can try something else. Um, but, you know, once again, I think that's an ongoing conversation at every visit, not just at one visit when you start the medication, but at every visit. Fair enough. Let me kind of go and do a, a final round table of kind of give us any main message, take home point that you want to leave either our patients, our professionals, any of our viewers, re readers, listeners out there with regards to side effects in these new drugs. And uh, Dr. Waterhouse, I'll start with you. Uh, what, what kind of big message do you want to make sure they take home? Well, I think we've all stressed the importance of communication, and I would say you really need to try to elicit from your patients uh, and their families any concerns about side effects. 
and don't dismiss a, a side effect because it hadn't been reported before, it hadn't come up in the early clinical trials. You know, this is how we discover new things is by listening and acting on them. So I would just say pay attention. Very good. Dr. Noe. Uh, I guess if I had a new message, it would be to re reiterate an old message, which is that our goal for all our patients is to try to achieve seizure freedom, but also freedom from adverse side effects. Um, and the fact that we're having an expanded array of drugs to choose from, I hope means that we'll be able to actually reach those goals for a, a larger number of patients. Very good. And Dr. Williams, last but not least. Well, you know, I think just kind of a practical issue. I think we've all commented on the number of new drugs coming out, many of them with many different types of very specific side effects. One thing I sometimes find helpful is to try and provide information to the families, because you said you talk about them in the office, but a lot of times these are rushed visits, people have other issues on their mind, so it's nice to be able to give them something they can read, take home, and maybe review at their own leisure. So once again, when they do come back, they're more informed patients. Well, that's uh, fantastic advice for all of us. I want to take this opportunity to thank our terrific uh, speakers and presenters uh, for this particular roundtable. To all of our viewers, readers, listeners out there uh, that has a chance to go over all this material, let us know what you think. Uh, check in at our Facebook page. Uh, ch check the community site, the blog. Uh, we want to be able to help. And we hope that this information that you heard today is going to be very useful to your practice, that it helps to empower uh, you, the individual with epilepsy, to kind of really take control and to see how we can best help you deal with this kind of difficult situation. So thank you again and appreciate all of your attention. Thank you.